I think he'd be pleased with the first half, but he's still got the second half to go to. Gavin. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, their tackling pressure was far better than a couple of weeks ago when these two sides met. So they're right in the contest here. Diggers rest and up and about low scoring contest, but we're away again as Lenny Clark wins it down to Stuart Clark. Gets a handball out. Rupert would clean the ball up behind Chris Kay. Picks the football up. He's tackled again by Stewie Clark and dispossessed. Smiles over the football players. Dive in. We'll have a bounce uh, here right on centre square. Uh, Ken, thanks very much for those comments during the halftime break and we'll keep in touch. Thanks very much, Ken. Back to Gavin and Chris. Yes, yeah, good work there from uh, from Mr. Helmore, who's a radio legend as the Sharks push towards the right of it off for, for rarity here as the, uh, the ball's gathered there by Gleeson. He looks to make it right with a big kick that went high up and under. Knocked to ground there by Morris. Swallow almost joins us here in the 100.7 Holland FM commentary box. It's 3624 Diggers Rest to Rupo, two behinds, and only one goal kick over the game. It's one Cal Wilson who's kicked. Three. And we await with interest how Rupert would, uh, Rupert would respond to the situation. Yeah, absolutely, yes. The Lenny Clark wins the knockout, follows up his own ball, but spills it. Oh. Through comes Morris, gets a handball. Uh, Harvey's wrapped up. Bishop strips him, and the ball follows down, and we're going to have another bounce. Two strong players there, Shane yeah. Bishop and uh, Craig Harvey. The tackling pressure for both sides <laughs> has been excellent, but especially from Digger's Rest so far. Always impressed whenever Shane Bishop takes to the field as he's wrapped up again in this one because uh, it was only a couple of years ago, Gab, where he uh, had a broken neck and it looked like he wasn't even going to play footy again. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, it's a really, really great effort to get back and he still puts his head over the footy. He hasn't changed a bit as Clark wins the knockout to Jackson. Jackson off to Harvey and again the Burroughs get another clearance from uh, stoppage. But going back with the flight of the ball, Noel McGovern, who's been a rock back there for Rupertswood. Probably be, uh, the scores would probably be a lot greater difference if it wasn't for Noel McGovern at this point in time. Gavin, I'd be interested to see how Rupert's would forward line move this uh, this quarter because the, the coach was wanting to play it further up the ground. Let's see how they go uh, this quarter. Kick up towards the commentary wing there from Flanagan. Swallow, he's wrapped up straight away. Umpire says play on, just got his handball away. Good work there uh, from the, the Burrows as they clear the ball up towards the middle of the ground. But Morris into, intercepts and Brady handballs now to Tristan Murphy. Just uh, oh, couldn't quite get boots to ball there. Stewie Clark just it out to Williams in the middle of the ground though. Rupert's would regather the ball, kick around the body there. And a mark's taken there by uh, Smales there for the, the Burrows. He switches across to the outer side. Fogarty, he's got some time to settle. Handball's in board to Evans. He like rick kicks ricochets out to Bishop. But it goes out to Stewie Clark. This is it out towards Hannon. Disposal just a little bit sloppy at the moment. Although Freeth eyeing off Fogarty. Good work there from um, from uh, Tommy West. We'll see a boundary throw 50 metres out from goal. I think it's rest 3, 6, 24. Rupo two behinds. He's been pretty good today, Tommy West, for, for Rupert's Woody. He's been a, uh, one of those sweeping type players that's got plenty of the footy. Uh, it probably need to get a, have him winning the footy more forward to centre. Brady. Gavin and Chris, is there a case for uh, Rupert's Wood to uh, play man-on-man -man up here on the forward line, noticing uh, that Diggers West have got a couple of extras back there? I think they have to. Uh, uh, their forward structure's a bit sloppy at the moment. It has been all day, hence why they've only got two behinds on the board, so they need to do something as Stewie Clark winds on the left foot deep inside 50. Wilson! Game back with the fly, takes a one-handed grab, and he will line up for his fourth goal of the day. And the fourth goal of the day. <laughs> That's right, he's done all the attacking at the moment. This is to put the margin out to, uh, well, the 28 points. And when considering Rupo haven't kicked a goal in, I'll take a stab and say 50. Five, 56 minutes of football. That's a big, big concern if you're a Rupe supporter here today. And he's in a difficult pocket. Yeah, Let's see how he goes. From here. Yes. Is he aiming for the left or the right, Gav? He's going for the right. Go for oh, the I'm right. Sorry, it oh. just came back too far, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's his first minor score of the yeah, day. You can see him. Well, we had a bit of feedback too on that, what happened at the end of the quarter. Um, the, the controlling umpire thought that the mark was taken before the siren, but uh, the boundary umpire and the non-officiating uh, uh, umpire both thought it was after the siren. Therefore, with the, the weighted numbers, they went with the after the siren and pulled it off. Good, good consultation. Yeah. Yep. Better to work with the lesser decision there, as, uh, as Mock spoke about in the reserves for those who were listening during the broadcast there. Great insight into what happened down on the field as uh, Lenny Clark marks here on centre wing. Lenny Clark, former rookie at, at the Brisbane Lions, he pumps the ball, long players will fly, 30 out from goal, kick around, the body there from Roypo, and it bounces out of bounds, and of course, uh, 
A big thanks to uh, the Kenny Helmore, Doug, because he was off in yes. dead breath. He's got the man yes. blue, yep. but it hasn't stopped him from going to the footy. Yes, indeed. Uh, just going back to that consultation, the umpire, it's good with the other umpire stepping in because he was closer to where the siren was up at the social club end. Yeah, that's why. Very good. Better to get the decision right, even if it takes a, just a little bit longer. And so the ball is up in the middle of the ground, just left off centre, and uh, Bar uh, Diggers trying to, uh, to work their way into some great pressure, and they're executing at their finest. Yes. Smell sends the ball forward, he's looking for his yes. man again, Wilson! Yes, he's been dangerous all but day. But actually, free kick's back up here, uh, guys. Uh, yes, uh, Dougie. Yes, you. Yes. And yep. He's explaining the push, and uh, so a Rupert's would free kick at about the centre half back position. Yeah, but it'll go more up to towards our defensive 70, and that uh, and the play can't continue there because the man on the mark there, Brandon Kilty, that's that's roughly where the mark should be, yep. and this is a good chance here, Dougie, for uh, for Diggers Rest to get back. Yes, uh, they can get it up onto their offensive side of the ground. That will be to their advantage. 3.725, two behinds, uh, six minutes gone here. Thirteen Highlands FM footy. But he's got to have options to kick to, and uh, you know the Rugbywood players have got to open the game up. They've got to, uh, particularly to get up into the corridor on the offensive side of the flank. Lenny Clark okay. was just Good. loose there. Slips out now to Smales. No poor opportunity. Chance here for Swallow. Right foot kick around the body. Good work there by Poddlezak. Nurses his man on the ball. He'll send the ball deep inside that forward pocket, and Ryan took the mark. But that is a disappointing kick for the Rupo side. No, Todd was a bit under pressure there, and uh, that's the idea of pressure, isn't it? So uh, it uh, makes it very hard for the player with the ball. If you complete maintain pressure, well, we're yeah, going to see a 50 metre penalty here, guys. Craig yeah. Harvey dealing with Chris Kay after the mark, and we'll, it'll take Kay almost to the goal line. And and this is what we've seen throughout all three games, even yesterday, that the umpires from the get go are doing their best to protect the players. So that's a very good decision. And a very important goal for Rupert's Wood. They've got to get back to the midfield and then uh, score another, get down on the forward line again. And preferably coming in from the corridor or the offensive offensive side. I'll Keep away from this flank. I'll take a stab, guys, and say that is about 61 minutes for Rupert's Wood to kick their first goal in the game. Let's see if that opens up the floodgates <laughs> a little bit because they have struggled. They got a little bit of a break there. Took them to the goal line, gets their first goal of the day from Chris Kay. Um, Rupert's Wood looks like they've thrown uh, Toddy Pottlezak forward here. He was having no impact on the wing. It's probably a good move, but we've seen he won the footy out here on that half forward line, and despite turning the ball over, Rupert's Wood ended up with the score out of it, so they need a bit out of Toddy. And the important free kick for Rupert's Wood there has helped them not get that goal. It was there. Yep, up in the middle of the ground here. But strangely enough, despite Diggers Rest's absolute dominance, they are only 17 points up. So uh, Rupert's Wood, they can count their lucky stars that Diggers Rest haven't can, uh, capitalised here as Chris Kay so it tucks the ball up on his arm and looks for, or tries to spot up Niall McGovern, a good forward option there. They've turned the back line around, haven't they? Yeah, Niall McGovern's gone forward as well, which is, again, not, probably not a bad option. Uh, we've seen in the first two games, the coaches really didn't throw anything, any caution to the wind. Yes. Um, and, and we just saw the same result over and over again. Yes. Now, Rupert's Wood might be able to mix it up a bit with Swallow out to Pottles, eh? throws oh, it on yes. the boot and forward, but that's man, that man again, Jace Williams, yes. and takes uh, a relieving mark. He was trying to get the ball to uh, Niall Govan. Well, not to, uh, Jace Williams, but uh, Todd Palislak. Yeah, <laughs> well, the two big moves <laughs> down there as uh, Hannon squeezes it around the body up towards half forward, looking for Sims. He picks it up on the bounce, has support there in Evans, who's been one of the best for mine inside the forward 50. Can't quite hit the target. Wilson's going to go on his left. Wilson has kicked the goal. Smack bang over the umpire's head. I think that one was Breen there. Oh, Rick Breen. Yeah, Breen. There you Beautiful go. Beautiful left foot snap. Turned his opponent inside out. Beautiful goal for Diggers Rest. Like you said there, Yendi, Tommy Evans is having an impact out there on that half forward line for Diggers Rest. Yes, the first half called off them. Uh, I just thought the uh, the defence was a little bit uh, weak there, not as accountable as it could be, not shoulder to shoulder with Friend. He had plenty of space. Yeah, just didn't transition was down at all. Forward line. He, was, he had a five metre break. Yeah, five when meter Williams break. turned the football over, Rupert's Wood didn't transition. It allowed Diggers to get one on ones and, and really break the game open to, for that score. 4 7 31, Diggers Rest to Rupo. 1 2 8. We've gone nine minutes gone, third term, Highlands FM football. As Stewie Clark squeezes the kick out towards half forward and Paddy Jack. Jackson, look at him put on his go-go guess. He uh, he fell at the crucial stage, just uh, dodged the tackle and drew a high tackle in the process. He'll try and get it up into the corridor on the other side of the ground, and that's what he's doing. Just sort of lost its way in the yes. wind there, and Brent Swallow 
Worked hard here for the Sharks. Lenny Clark has got his name all over this. Yes. He, um, his two teammates could have been in it. And they talked. That's the important thing. However, Gaunt, as a few times already today, Gav, as Mark's cross half back. Yeah, he's, a, he's good at reading the footy back there, Mitch Gaunt. Sandhurst in front. Right. Sandhurst in front by three points over uh, Gisborne at the moment. They're just not using the ball well, Rupert's with today. They've, they've really struggled with that switch kick. Um, they've just got to pick out better targets. Their, their short kicking has struggled. Get a, hit a bit of grass and, and let your teammates run onto it. And there's a lot about uh, the uh, basics of di disposal and uh, you're leading them with the hand, with the football down onto your boot, and with the wind around today, the, the, boot, the ball is not landing on the boot as the players want, some of the players want. And there's the difference there, Freeth hits Sims, lace out, and then we, he gives it off to Williams, who hits Callum Wilson on the lead, lace out, and uh, this kick certainly not beyond Wilson. Oh, that wind has certainly picked up over that half-time break. But uh, given he's kicked three goals today, it has been the most dangerous forward on the ground by all accounts. And the wind just dropping conveniently. This is to put the margin out to a game high. Five goals. Right foot kick on its That's way. Cracking kick. Oh, it's just One missed. Point. Either way, it's still the biggest margin of the day. 24 points. 32 to 8. That's 11 gone in this term. And again, just l that low penetrating kick a goal, and, and that's the, been the difference between the two sides. Rupo, probably a bit too much air. Diggers willing to try those low driving passes, and we see one there finally from Rupo. Swallow just keeps the ball low, gets Corso, and who kicks out towards the centre wing, and that's a nice yes, kick. That's okay. Hit a bit of grass and just gets it out into space. He got out on his own, Gavin. Yeah, Rupert's Wood plays on it, delivers towards half forward. Good contest there from Pottlezak and slug it. Ball comes out, Mitch Gaunt doing it at both ends. Finds a left foot, great little kick, Norm McGovern, who just Popped out the back of the pack there, had 20 metres in the clear. He'll go back and have a shot on goal for a desperately needed goal for Rupertswood. And uh, what happened in that uh, passage of play? There were a couple of Rupertswood players who found players who found space. They're out on their own. Yeah, and just the kicks were a little bit better. Just out into grass and gave them that room to move. As McGovern has a shot on goal, it goes across Jordan! the face. Out of bounds on the fall. Jordan yeah. took a strong mark, but it was out of bounds Adam. on the fall. And that. The, the goal, um, the boundary umpire was right on it. Good yeah. positioning. So we'll see more play out on this side of the field again. So guys, that's the advantage of having uh, two boundary umpires on each side. Getting close enough to that action there. The ball comes out towards uh, towards the middle of the ground here. West goes to hands to Goodson. Inside the forward 50 here for Rupo. Kicking to the right of it. Oh, oh big, big fly there. Especially from Clark. Dylan Hannon knocked out. Play on. Of course, now holding the ball there. Freeth just throws it on the boot. Plenty of sharks around this one. And it uh, might favour Evans. He lays a good tackle. He just got the handball there. Out to Swallow. Just keeps it in the third of play. We'll see if Andrew's running between yes. wing and half forward. 13 gone, third term. It's Great tackling pressure again. 32 to 8. Josh Blaine, one of the young boundary umpires coming through. Good. Throws it in. Good to see the youth come in. Gaunt yes. takes it out of the ruck. Just got his handball out of the way. That's very clever, smart football. Might say the same result though. Plays. Diving in on top of each other. Lockie Muir, handball out now to a teammate coming through. Corso tries to weave his way out of traffic. Just got his handball away. Set up good by Jason. Good pressure. Good pressure. Oh. Good pressure. Good tackling. Yeah, uh, the Sharks see the way what happens. They're going to feel battered and bruised after this contest. Right foot kick inside the forward 50. Jordan, cut a good sport from behind. Now here's a chance here for Diggers Rest. Uh, Kroll, soccer's off the ground. If Laurie can pick it up, he is in business. He's got Smith hot on his hammer. What a contest this is. Sensational. Out towards Sims. Right foot kick inside the forward 50. Looking for Wilson. Over his head. Breen, he dodges the tackle there. And, uh, and Brennan, playing in the back line, gathers possession of the ball gap. Yeah, good switch out here for Rupert's Wood out towards Swallow. Switch across the play. Swallow takes the mark, it settles a little bit. He's got a man on inside with Morris. A bit of possession football. Morris because takes the mark. Set themselves up, Gavin. Absolutely, Morris takes the mark. It dishes off the handball. Uh, out wide, the ball comes out wide towards Goodson, who started to find a bit of the footy in this quarter. Side steps around Lenny Clark and straightens up with a good kick towards Danny Jordan. Oh. Williams again comes over the top as the support. Breaks the game open. 
Crow gives the hands off to Hannon. Hannon out in front of Sims, who Ooh. takes a strong mark. Yes, a late yeah. challenge. Late challenge. So strong mark there. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's uh, yeah. not 50. Good umpiring by Jace Mousley. Yeah, I think he jumped uh, well as the mark was being taken. He just happened to follow through. And what's going to happen here is a little bit of conversation happening there with Jeff Heritage involved in this passage. And uh, perhaps time was called on or rough. No, a few too many people having a chat to the umpire here. Yes. Just let him get on with the job. On Heritage wanted to speak to uh, Jace Mousley about his not paying the 50 and uh, really it disadvantages Diggers Rest because now Rupo can get numbers behind the ball. Yeah, that's a good point there, uh, Gav. Inside the forward 50 now. Oh, and a low penetrating pass uh, to the leading forward. It's Wilson. Now he's just in fine form today going for goal number three. four. Brent off. Oh. You've got you. They, you got these two. They, they are brothers in arms. They're like twins out there yeah. after that Ford 50. <laughs> Except one's a right foot and one's a left footer. <laughs> <laughs> and Breen is the um, the left footer. But you have a look at the decision making uh, uh, there earlier. Corso had the ball out here, turned back into traffic when he had numbers on the outside. Diggers rest, willing to take the game on on the outside, and they they. Push, push the ball forward, set up for another shot on goal. Yes, and over there, Sean Sims played uh, played a very important role in a couple of passages of play over there. That shot there from Breen goes to the far side. It's Not only the mark, but also defending Chris. I thought he's tackling and pressure there uh, in, a, in a passage of play before, picking up the ball very good. One goal, two on the ball there for uh, for Breen today. It's 4-9, 33 to one two eight. The Still the highest margin of the day there, Gav. As Rupert would bring the ball out wide towards Goodson. Better use of the footy out of the back half then. Now this is where they have trouble with this kick. And they, once again, the kick just goes out on the full as Sean Sims gives him a mouthful. Yeah, the fellas here just got to concentrate on playing the game though. Yeah, we did see that uh, yesterday guys, in that, especially in that second half there where um, tensions probably weren't focused on the ball that much. That third term when the game was done and dusted. But it's 33 to 8. And we've gone 17 minutes, gone third term, Highlands FM footy. Bowers kicking with what has been the uh, the scoring end, which is where the breeze has been blowing strongly. Clark, after a good, strong, contested mark, he's looking for one of the boys there in Breen or Wilson. But he'll get a free. It was a definite hold on Wilson there, and he'll go back and have a shot on goal. And this will favour the other uh, right footer. So right post curl back in. He's done this one pretty well today. I think he's, two of his goals have both come from this side. So if he uh, if he can get this one again, it'll be uh, it'll, uh, this one might be the the goal that breaks the camel's back. Mr. Push the margin out to five goals, and we haven't seen five goals kicking the game so far. We've seen 13 shots, 13 scoring shots to three. Wilson. Must kick this goal. He just sneaks it in for a minor score. He's kicked three behinds this quarter, Wilson, and uh, still the most dangerous forward on the ground, but really needs to bury these. It's just giving Rupe that slight sniff as the kick out comes long towards the wing, and we're going to see a free kick for a push out. And it will go to Diggers Rest to Stewie Clark. A free kick against Goodson, who was in a three on one then and had little other option. Probably a better thing to do at the end of the day. Yeah, professional free kick. Clark kicks forward. It's a wobbly, worm burning kick. Picked up by Shane Bishop, who clears the handball out, but only gets as far as Stewie Clark. Gives the ball off to Mick Kilty. Fades a handball and then goes long Ooh. into the centre of the ground. Overshoots his target in Jeff Heritage, but Jace Williams yeah, busts through again. <laughs> picks the ball up one hand and kicks long inside for it. 50. Bounce just through from behind, but gee, how good is that kick been today? Yes, he's done very well from that um, half back line and through the midfield, no doubt about that. Uh, Rubitswood had a chance there, but they couldn't capitalise on it. It's 4 11 35 to 1 2 8. Yendi. Yes, 18 minutes gone here then in the Premiership quarter, and uh, the Bowers are kicking into the, well, into the breeze effectively. Well, they're in the, at least they're on the offensive flank. Yep, well, it hasn't gone out there too many times today well, as Laurie comes in with the spoil. First two kicks out of defence have been good from Rupertswood. It's that third kick that keeps falling down time after time every time they come outside of that defensive 50. Sandhurst 6 12 48, Lee Gisborne 7 4 46 in the Benigo Football Netball League Senior Elimination Final as Stewie Clark takes a well judge mark in the middle, smack bang in the middle of Eric, uh, in Cowie Reserve here at Rock Bank. As he pumps the ball along, and both players holding there at half forward. Chance here for Fogarty if he can gather a little bit of bump going off off the ball there. Dribbling kick and it'll go through for a minor score. At the 4-12.
36 to 128. But the Sharks aren't out of this contest at all by any means. No, they're still within touch because of the inaccurate kicking. But um, I'll tell you what, they're going to—they they effectively need six goals or seven goals to win the contest. They've kicked one so far, so it's a long, long way back. It's hard work for Rupertswood to win it from here, fellas. And again, it's two good kicks out of the defensive 50. It's this one that breaks down, though. And again, we see a sloppy kick forward and picked up by Gleeson, who kicks inside forward 50 and hits Carl Wilson. 60 metres out for goal, plays on handballs to Gleeson, Gleeson pops it up into the space, oh, going well back done. with the fly to ball, the ball, Brandon Kilty, great mark, and again, that third kick breaks down for Rupertswood, and Diggers Rest go back and get another scoring shot. Well, Brandon Kilty, uh, he, when he's on the run, he'll eat these for breakfast, lunch and dinner, but uh, into these, this breeze, it might sort of struggle a little bit. Does love a goal, Brandon. And he loves to celebrate too, like the best of them. This is the pussy margin out. We've been saying it for a long time to a big margin. That is a great goal. Never in doubt. Never. He's pumped. He's pumped. He's saying it around me, boys. That's the seal that we're going through to face Riddle next week. Essentially is what the attitude is like. But uh, yes. never say never. Well, it's yes. going to be hard to see Rupert's we get back from this position, Doug. Yes, Gavin. As I just said, it's uh, hard work. Just the way Diggers Rest are playing and Rupert's would are playing both sides. And uh, the positives are in Diggers Rest's favour. Absolutely. And, and look, it's just that ball use going inside forward 50. It's far cleaner, far more effective. Diggers are hitting grass, giving their opportunity, or the forwards opportunity to run onto it. Rupert's would are turning it over at, 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 in the middle and at half forward. Well, it's 5-12. Yes. Sorry, Dougie. No, you're right. 5-12, uh, 42 to 1-2, 34 points of margin, 21 gone, third term, Dougie. I'm sure Diggers Rest uh, won't be complacent. They'll be wanting to uh, see it right through to the uh, full term. Well, uh, high tackle there, time. Swallow again. He's the best user of the ball that in Rupert's Wood Steam at the moment. Chris Kay, who's had a really good quarter, finding a bit of footy, but really needs to find a target now. Drives to centre half forward, straighten the Lenny Clark direction. Oh! Corso coming out. He's been paid yep. the grab. It was really well done. And uh, that's better ball movement from Rupo Yendi. He's quick to get the going. He pulls the trigger from 50 metres. It'll fall short. The big man, DJ that's Bottlezak. Ah, oh, well, the Highlands FM Henrik Winery play of the day. The last time these two teams, mate. Uh, Based off, and he's got into the game this quarter. Yeah, really strong overhead mark, Toddy Pottlezack. So it's good. That, again, good that PJ threw some some caution into the wind, threw him forward, and they they'll get a result out of it. You're still no certainty from here. Oh well, here we go. High diddle diddle. Yep, straight through the high diddle diddle. If Kenny had the old vocals going, he'd be getting a little bit pumped up. It's two two fourteen to five twelve forty two twenty eight points to the margin. And we've ticked on twenty two minutes. Third time Highlands FM footy with Gav, Doug, Yenny, and of course the other man with the man flu on death's bed, Kenny in the studio. And uh, Rupert Wood, uh, let's hope that can encourage them. It should. And uh, let's see what they can do from the midfield here. How many yeah. minutes gone, uh, Chris? 22, mate. 22. Yeah, really, important much time. Goal. really important goal for Rupert Wood. If they can, they can somehow snare another one here in the last minute or so, um, uh, it's probably unlikely, but at least this keeps them in touch and gives them a little bit of hope. Spot on. And the famous back to fo front four on the scoreboard telling a, a good story if you're a Diggers Rest fan. Although Rupo pushing forward now through Gaunt up towards Pottlezack again. Dribbles out towards uh, Gleeson. He's well shepherded there. Neil Nile McGovern lays it. Tackle. Yeah, yeah, good it. decision by Dan yes. Wardley there. Yes. Definitely it, holding it the ball. There. It was it, there. You would love Nile McGovern. To, or actually, Ben Jordan would love Nile McGovern to kick a goal because he's, as you guys have said, throwing Pottlezack in the middle. And uh, McGovern, or the offloads left to Swallow, who sends the ball out. Of, Bounce! Oh, big fly. Lucky Muir. It would have been fitting that McGovern had gone bang because that would have been the experiment to perfection. Look, Noel should have gone back and had a shot then. There was really no need to handball it off. Brent Swallow shouldn't have come past a call for it because he basically ran into the man on the mark. Um, you got, just got to be smarter, Rupert Swood. Probably the difference between the two sides today. Ball 30 metres out from uh, from the goal for Rupert Swood. An umpire dasher will a ball this Well, the McGovern, if the McGovern had a kick that he could have put it into a more dangerous spot at the top of the square. Yep. Instead, Swallow's under pressure. He kicks and forces to the dead pocket again. Which, of course, has happened so many times today. Corso gets the handball away. Out towards the boundary line. Deep inside the, uh, the forward pocket. And a good tackle there. And umpire Dasher will ball this up. It's 42 to 14. 24 gone. Third term. Highlands FM footy. Yes, that shot for goal. Dan Jordan had made position uh, in the goal 
square on his own and he was just disappointed that uh, his teammate was unable to get the ball over heads to, to him in the goal square. Bishop's wrapped up straight away, a uh, high tackle may have been made blind side of the umpire. But either way, Rupert's will head back in now, Swallow. At least they're getting it back into the corridor, Chris. Yep, and now here's a difficult position. As uh, a Swallow will have a shot after the siren. A big thanks to Mark Smith. He's filled up our generator, I think, so we've got more yeah, power to us. We, we should be right for the rest of the day now. Swallow, it's a spiral mongrel looking kick. It won't score at all, and Kenny, it's now three-quarter time here at Ian Carey Reserve in the first semi-final. The winner going straight on to take Romsey, uh, sorry, Riddle next. Direct have numbers around the ball, giving themselves more opportunities. They've got to get the ball in. The stoppages have been good, and they want to, uh, to ask all the players to be more direct and just think about what they're doing out there. And uh, they've got to take risks to win this game. Of course they do. They certainly do here, Gav. There's a big final team here at Highlands FM. Yeah, they'll need five goals to win it, so that's going to be a tough ask for them as Lenny Clark wins the hit out, but Shane Bishop wins the Sharks the ball. Tackle there from Mitch Gorn on Luke Smiles, and the ball's locked in there as players dive on top, and we'll have a secondary bounce right in the centre of the ground. And, of course, apologies to the Diggers rest uh, supporters. It's hard to have uh, one man doing two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Kick goes forward. Brandon Kilty breaks from the centre square. Kicks long towards Brandon. Oh. Oh, Unrealistic. He might have hurt himself a little bit there too, but well done by Lee Brennan. Held his ground. Gets the free kick and kicks out wide towards Mitch Gorn on the wing with space. Gorn plays on. Good shepherd from Chris K. Kicks down the half forward line. Podolzak drops what he should have taken. Recovers though. It has plenty of time to pick the ball up and centre it up into the middle of the ground. Well done, Brandon Kilty coming back with the flight of the ball. Spoils it. Lenny Clark handball over the top to Tommy Evans who's been in everything. He kicks inside 50 towards Wilson who leads his opponent to the ball. Just taps it along in front. Sockers off the ground towards the pocket. Fogarty leading the race. Left foot snap. Top of the square. Tommy Evans set underneath it. Doesn't take the mark. Gets a handball out to Wilson who snaps around the body. Oh! And a swallow. And through for Wilson's fourth goal of the day. Wow, well, Dougie, the bounce. Yes, yes indeed. And uh, got to give credit to the players uh, down there. At, but uh, Diggers rest down that forward line. They gave themselves every opportunity of uh, still retaining possession. And then it got out to Wilson. And uh, yes, the big bounce over the defender's head and through for a goal. And ladies and gents, this one is over. And when it's your day, it's your day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And look... Rupo, nothing to lose here. Just take the game on as much as possible and uh, and see what happens. But uh, the way the day's rolled on today, you know, Dougie, yeah. which is going to be very, very tough for me. Uh, yes, a lot of character to be displayed by Rupert Wood. And uh, as we said in the first quarter, with the firm grounds, the bouncing ball, and certainly there was good evidence uh, then. As Glarus comes out towards Pottlezak there for Rupo. We're kicking the left of Vidal. Or with the other breeze, the wind of the breeze today. The blow has sort of stopped here in this second half. It's blown across us at the moment. It's smeared and kicks long inside the forward line. And a strong mark's taken there by Krull. And DJ is just has not been in the contest at all. Been ineffective as Brady. He pumps the ball along. It was an old floater. Hoping for, uh, for DJ to pick up the ball. Gives it, don't argue. And it was there. He gave away the free kick. Been a frustrating day for Dan Jordan. Yes, yeah, certainly has, and uh, he's he just gave the fend off there, got it slipped a bit high, and uh, Steve Fogarty will take the free kick, Dougie. Yes, and uh, one can you know, feel for Rupert Wood. Uh, they've uh, beaten uh, Diggers Rest a couple of times this year, I think, and uh, it's a matter now of, uh, of just a test of character for them. But it's going to be a hard road to hoe for the next 20 minutes. Oh, well, they just haven't beaten them at the wrong time, the right yes. time of year, unfortunately. As Noel McGovern marks, spots up his brother Dara. Long way out from goal. Just put it in there, Dara. 48 to 14, early stages, final turn. Players will fly! Jason Williams! Should we just um, Photoshop a bottle of wine into his yeah, hands? Well? We almost <laughs> could right now, I think. Paddy <laughs> yes, Jackson drives up towards the wing. Stewie Clark in a two on one, defects the spoil. Pretty well done there. But Rupert's Wood with numbers clean it up. Brent Swallow delivers the handball out to Mitchie Gorn, who goes on the right foot to the forward pocket. And Goodson again, who's been pretty good, young Goodson. He finds plenty of space and he gets the ball in the deep forward pocket, Yendi. 
He certainly does. He puts the ball up towards centre half forward. Fogarty flies, brings the ball to ground. Johnny Ryan, he's shown great leadership there as Smales swung into the back line, swings the ball up towards the middle of the ground. Here goes Craig Harvey, bounces over his head. They were the best of the ball, didn't favour the Bowers that time. Back to Brent Swallow. He's just trying to work his way around. Tommy Evans spots Noel McGovern. He's run himself into trouble, finds his brother as it often ha has happened today. McGovern of the Darren Variety looking for Jordan. He's got two against him. Tom Gleeson is leads, leads the way. Big contest, 30 metres out from goal. As the Bowers lead this one by 38 points and eyeing off a replay match there with the Bombers next week in the prelim. Kick around the body from Williams. Noel McGovern He's got plenty of real estate there. No one wants to go near him. He brings the ball. Tries to find his brother for the third or fourth time for this quarter so far. Not forthcoming here. Good work there by Mitch Gorn. Finds Brady. Inside the 450. Gav. Poor turnover. Yeah, Gleeson just picks it off and bangs the ball to the middle. Swallow in space. Takes the mark and delivers inside 450. Uh. Smeaton drops what he should have taken. It was an easy mark in the end. Goodson ends up with the ball. Dragged down by Sean Simpson from behind. But gets his... Oh! Great contest. And Chris Kay's going to be hurt from that. Johnny Ryan came storming through, kick out to half forward, Breen leads up with the race, great tackle by Brent Swallow, locks him up, and we'll have a bounce on centre wing, right in front of the commentary box. Yes. Fellas, uh, just a comment, if uh, Rippets were going to go direct, which they have been asked to do, and they're going to bomb it into the forward line, they've got to have their crummers around those packs, because if you're sending a ball in long like that, you must have your crummers around the pack, the other and time and again, Diggers Rest have got the numbers around the ball. The other thing uh, they need to do is get separation, Jason yes. Williams has come third man up on every occasion that ball's gone into. DJ oh, and um, you, we look down their forward line now and the player playing on Williams is standing right next to Dan Jordan again. Jeez hasn't stopped it. Brupo ba battled and bruised at the moment as uh, umpire Dan Wardley giving uh, Shane Bishop plenty of time to come off uh, to come up and that's Chris Case coming off a little bit worse for Leo. Notice a few Sharks players in the last uh, few moments are feeling very very sore. So uh, the ball slips out to Harvey. Sluggy spun his way to traffic. That was a throw, said the umpire Dan Wally. And again, that's what we love about uh, our umpires here in the RDFNL. Some of the best of them, you know what they're paying the free kick for. There's Goodson delivers up yeah. to half forward. Jordan on the lead. And once again, Williams comes over the top yes. and affects the spoil. The Williams direct opponent finally got front and centre then, but he's wrapped up in a tackle quickly. Diggers rest support players coming from the midfield have been excellent today. And uh, as, as we've commented in the first half, uh, their, their tackling has been much better this week, and that's what Sean Sims was asking these players. Better tackling, improved tackling. You were here for the Sharks. He's pickpocketed straight away. It's 48 to, uh, to 14. Seven gone. Final term. Harlands FM football. Up inside the forward 50 here for the uh, for the Burrows. Pat Jackson towards his captain. Sims who handballs in the space. Is, uh, I think it's James Breen just slung the ground. He's gone. And uh, I don't think there's any argument there. No, nah, that's holding the ball. Every time. No arguments there for too high. Just grabbed him by the jumper. Which is up towards the middle of the ground and Brady Marks. He's been okay, Brady, today. Okay, Swallow's got the ball. There's a chance here, Rupert. What are you going to do? See, Bob, now where are the Rovers? Where are the Crumbers? Oh, it's a 2 on one again. Jordan! It came out with a mark. Okay. Well, that's a case there, a rare case today where uh, he's sort of fallen at the back there. That uh, third man's yeah, gone uh, up. You had, um, they've had the two on one all day. Jace Williams has got across and supported Crow all day, but the, the, the problem they had there were both players ended up in front of DJ and he just slipped out the back and took a nice strong mark and goes back and drills the goal for his first for the day. Frustrating day for Dan Jordan, yes. but uh, gets gets that goal and uh, gives Repo a, a little bit of a sniff and hopefully they can keep pushing forward. Well, it's one goal one there for Dan Jordan today. Of course, he was on Channel 9, that uh, footy show which I saw posted online during the week. It's uh, 3 2 20 to 6 12 48 here on Highlands FM. 88.1 FM at the ground. And the uh, biggest rest fans, you can join, join us next week, assuming uh, you guys get the job done uh, on 88.1 FM at the ground as you take on a Riddle at Lansfield, where the grand final was hosted for a spot in the grand final. It's the prelim. Just uh, plenty of stories there on that one. Commentated of sports fans dream as Bishop tries to work his way out of traffic. Out to Darren McGowan, right foot kick around the body, looking for Pottles. at half four players are going to fly and uh, good clean hands. Yeah, well judged by Tommy Gleason. Then coming over the back, he's done that all day, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, played well, as as Chase Williams has done too. Yes, yes. Uh, plenty of answers as Gleason up towards half forward. Lenny Clark will be the man to fly uh, and unrealistic attempt. Yes, did not look at the ball. Looked at the man in front of him. And, yeah, just uh, wanted to make contact. Make with him contact. In the air. 
Clark inside the 450 is Sims. He stuck his hand up there, but it went over the top of him. Swallow ridden into the ground, into yeah, the back free decision. kick decision. Yes. And Swallow's uh, been a good uh, competitor for Rivetwood all day. He has, and he's he's generally used the ball pretty well too with those low daisy cutters. Yes. And again, he switches the ball out wide, finds his teammate out there in. Uh, who was that? Morris. Andy Morris, who <laughs> drives up towards <laughs> half forward. And again, and Diggers just with too many numbers. The brick wall. The brick wall of yeah. Diggers West. Kral wins a oh. great yeah, switching kick. Here. Great switching kick from Kral. Finds uh, Freeth out here on the wing. Has two bounces. Drives the ball inside Ford 50 towards Wilson on the lead. Uh, uh, Jackson trying to get out of the way there. Jack Jackson probably got in the way in the end. And the ball just hit him in the back and fumbled out of bounds. Bandry throwing 43 metres out from goal. It's 48 to 20. You've ticked on, uh, line gone. The final term, Highlands FM footy. Rucks go up. But, uh, Sharks bring the ball to ground. Lockie Muir handballs up towards the corridor. Overcooked it now. And Brandon Kilty and Mungrel looking high kick. Plenty of Sharks around. This one, Smiles went up. Couldn't quite take the mark there, Dougie Bandry throwing. No, he couldn't. Yeah. He's, um, he's been a bit quiet today, Luke yes, Smiles, yes, in has. comparison to last week. I mean, probably not the conditions for it, let's be honest. But um, he hasn't had the impact on the game that he had last week. Yes, he uh, started off well, but uh, has not been in the game, in the game as much in, that second, in the second half. Probably hasn't really needed to stand up too much today. He's had plenty of teammates that have done that as well in his absence. We'll see a ball up about 50 metres out from goal. The umpires love the work they've done today. The communication skills, been fantastic. There's a handball over the head of Harvey there in towards the middle of the ground. As he gathers, goes back by hand, Lenny Clark just curls it around the body. Yes, Sean Sims, he was almost going to go, probably just as well as he did it. He would have got crunched as the Sharks here. Almost shoveled out there from Darren McGovern. Out towards Brandon Kilty now, of Diggers Rest, back inside the 450. Smells picks it up on the half volley. Beautiful tackle, just got boot to ball as he slung around to the tackle there. Caught, taking the ground there, 45 metres out from goal. And we'll see it all up. Uh, it's uh, 6 12 48 to 3 2 20. 11 gone, uh, final turn, Dougie. Yes, 11 minute mark, and uh, it, what is it, uh, 28 points down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a bit hard to pick up from here. All inside. Oh, sorry, girls, Gav. Yeah, Harvey gets the handball out to Freeth. Freeth turns around onto the right boot and slams it forward towards Wilson again. But the ball dribbles out of bounds. And we'll have a throw in in the forward pocket. Left point post. Diggers rest in attack. Sanders by seven points over Gisborne at uh, six minutes of the final term, Gav. All we need is one more person from Diggers Rest. We'll have the entire bench watching from right in front of the commentary box as Kilty goes around the body from the stoppage, pushes it to the left and registers it behind. Well, they need uh, five goals and without uh, Diggers Rest uh, scoring. Uh, that's the uh, how the, uh, the scoreboard reads for Rupertswood. Fizz sort of gone out a little bit, guys. Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh cut off by Fogarty. He throws it on the right boot. Will he get the bounce? No, that time. <laughs> it just dribbles through for a point, but well done, Fogarty, on the toes, staying in the game. Oh, 12 minutes gone here in this final turn. The margin has ballooned out back out to 30 points. So, an even five goals. Could we have a draw? Well, we won't be here next <laughs> week, obviously. We'll, uh, we'll probably be here under lights at this stage, or the sun is still out. We'll have the uh, the night trains go by at that time. As we see a boundary throw in here commentary side, 6 14 50 to 3 2 20. Just recapping the winners in the other games in the um, in the footy. We had Broadford over Kilmore by seven or eight goals, and uh, Summary Kangaroos over Rupo by 13 goals in a game that no one predicted the result. First one was high, blind, blindsided to us, right in front of the umpire, Dan Worley there, free kick, Darren McGovern. Yes, he's got to get into the corridor, not into the pocket. He's got to get it, he's, he's, he's looking for options, well done, Diggers Rest. He's cut off the options, but he's, so he's got to come back to the defensive wing. Mitchell Gord kicks inside forward 50 and just going to be cut off again. Johnny Ryan, the Diggers defence, they've yes. done that all day, just picked off the kick going inside forward 50. And uh, West Coast defeating Gold Coast by 52 points, by the way, guys. 38 goals in that game as Pat Jackson takes the mark, plays on, handballs it towards Sims. Uh, good workman like effort from him today. Speaking of workman like effort, Tom Evans is uh, involved in that passage of play. Pat Jackson lays attack on Darren McGovern. Darren has probably been one of the standouts here for the Sharks, especially here in the second half when yeah, the back's been up against it. He's been one of Rupert's best, there's no doubt about it. He's been pretty solid across that half-back line. 
Are we going to continue the Highlands FM curse today? Or is Jason Williams just dead set the best by a mile? I think he's best by a mile, but um, uh, we're probably... Well, it is the curse, so it wouldn't we'll be the curse We'll call it as we, we see it. it. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. And then they can get stuck into us if we've chosen the wrong We named Brad Mitchell yesterday and he uh, didn't get in the top six, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, that's as uh, Brennan takes a relieving mark in the defensive 50 from another digger's rest clearance. He goes back and drives the ball towards the centre of the ground. Stephen Freeth sets Ooh. himself. Ball over the back. Lenny Clark leads in the race. Comes back. Goodson meets him. Smeared and attacks the ball as well. And Diggers with Tommy Gleeson feeds the ball out wide to Stewie Clark. Clark to the running Heritage. Heritage a little chip up to Luke Smales. Smales has the football and looks forward. He's going to have to sit it on someone's head now, I think. Oh, he's hanging for a goal too. Chips the kick and it's yes. not a good one and it's cut off there. Damon, uh, Sorini, uh, well Damon done. Sorini, you yeah. saw what was happening, you got into the hole. Well done. Sorini, defensive 30. It's 50 to 20 in favour of Diggers Rest. Eyeing off a spot against uh, Riddle next week as Pat Jackson breaks the lines. He pumps the ball long! And Lee Brennan marks. Behind the stick. And meanwhile, Ooh. Joel Flanagan's feeling it a bit in the solar plexus. Yeah, heavy whack. Mm. 15 minutes gone here in this term, 32 points to the margin, not the game high, the game high was 34 points when Brad, Brandon Kilty kicked the goal at the 21 minute mark of the uh, the third term. Ball goes up towards Sean Sims, tackled beautifully there by Damon Sorini. There's your, uh, there's your past and I guess there's your future there of senior football in this competition. Sims being a great servant, Damon Sorini, a young talent on the rise. For the Sharks, as Goodson handballs inboard into traffic. Darren McGovern out to his brother Niall. Four or five times in this quarter alone where the two have linked up. This time it has not paid off. Ryan handballs out towards Smales here for Diggers. Rest at half forward commentary side. Ryan squeezes a kick high as he kicked it back to the action. Where is... Uh, oh, and, uh, and Johnny's saying, why don't you smack me here? Right in front of the umpire. If you want to go down that path, and a free kick there, Gav. Yeah, I don't think he's going to lay one on him there. No. <laughs> it wasn't much in it. Johnny just likes a bit of a talk. Fellas, so the obvious one's got to be impressed with the way Diggers Rest have had numbers around the ball all over the ground. Absolutely. Sean Sims picks the ball up, delivers long towards the goals. Three Rupo players back there. And they'll clean it up. Shane Bishop will leave out of the defensive 50. Out towards the wing and a foot race between Stuart Clark and his Rupert's Water Pace. <coughs> Clark tries to get body contact on but misses. That's pretty well done out there by young Jason Dunn. Kicks inside Who's forward there? 50 and there is no Rupert's Wood forward anywhere. Matty Cole comes bolting back and keeps the ball in. Lenny Clark will clean it up. Handball off to slug it. Slug it with a bit of forward pressure coming from Goodson, but uh, gets past him easily. Kick out towards half forward and Sims takes the mark just yep. inside the boundary That's line. Mark. Umpire Cam Black right on it. Kick along the boundary line, up towards uh, Mick Kilty, the big boy. Yes. He's solid and stocky, isn't he? <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's got a good kick on him too. Yeah. Let's hope he delivers on this case here. It's 51 yes, to 20. Corridor. He's got to go into the corridor, hasn't he? Yep, yeah, well, he listened to you, Dougie. He did so beautifully. I think Sean was telling him as well. <laughs> <laughs> he, he went to the corridor and he hit a target there in Gleason inside the forward 50. Bang! So, I think he's going to come after, come to you at the end of the game and give you a high five there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Difference between uh, the two sides, though. Kick to grass. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, or the kick down there for Rupert Wood. Just uh, open 50 there where Diggers Rest Backman had all the time in the world. And... Uh, yeah, the ball's going up. Is that, uh, that's, that is Wilson. That is Wilson. Yep. <laughs> Not Breen. I think Breen just, just went on the ground there. But Wilson, long way out from goal. But the Diggers Rest boys are celebrating. This for a game high margin. Question of accuracy. It was straight. But it failed out to the left and back, back out to 32 points. And how many points is that for Wilson today? 4-4 four, four he's kicked today now. Yeah, one can never doubt the courage of all players that uh, play a great game of football, but you've also got to have a thinking head, and there are a lot of variables at stake in that uh, area of thinking about your football as well. But uh, when you've thought about it, or been informed, as John Kennedy often says, don't think, do. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot in our game about thinking and the strategies, as uh, Gavin talks about often, and when you've got a win, that's uh, an additional variable to our uh, game of football. Boundary throw in here, uh, Rupert Woods coaching staff side, gathered here by Heritage, handballs out to Fogarty, out to John Ryan, the captain there of Diggers Rest, inside the forward 50, he's got a big forward target there, can't quite take the mark there, ball 
Umpire says play on. In this case, he was in the right position there, Jason Mouse. We will see a, a ball up. And uh, almost 45 out from goal. Diggers rest attacking in, kicking to the right of his dial. Jackson wins a tap out there for the Sharks, but straight down to his opposite Ruckman there in Brady. Ball out there on the outer side. Laurie was involved in that passage of play as the Sharks look to turn defence into attack. Out towards Bishop, that fickle bounce bounces away from him, favours Diggers rest on the outer side. Brandon Kilty, umpire says play on. We'll see a ball up there, Gav. Great second effort foot by Shane Bishop then. Uh, uh, ball didn't, he just didn't give up, even though the ball bounced away from him and made it a tough one. He, he stayed in there and stuck the tackle. Ball goes up again, Lenny Clark in the ruck contest to win another free kick. He's just been a force in there, Doug. Yes, no doubt about that. And uh, they've had a good team out here today, Gavin, no doubt about that. Some players have been standouts for Diggers Rest, and you've already mentioned one who's just come off through the interchange bench, Jason Williams. Yeah, Jason Williams. Williams coming off for a rest, a well-earned rest at the end of the game. As, Mate, uh, doesn't he look fit, Gavin? Yeah, he Even does. at this stage, you know, at the end of the game, hard game he's played, and he's looking fit. Yeah, he's, he does, he's not blowing up at all. He's uh, he's controlled this one from the start and, and really was the catalyst to their drivers. Lenny Clark... Left foot kick inside Ford 50. Nile McGovern gets in the way and takes another mark. He's been a great performer for the uh, for the Sharks today, Nile, at course, both ends of the ground. Mm. And of course, as we know, with uh, first semi-finals, which this is, it's uh, hard work to get to the grand final. You've got to get through your first semi, but then you've got to win your preliminary before you get to the grand final. Romsey are up there waiting for whoever comes their way. Yeah, well, it's looking like it's Diggers Bombers next week as it's 52 to 20 here as the Burrows. Uh, well, they caught, sort of caught out there as Murphy gathers there for the Sharks. So absolutely clobbered there by Kroll. Gee, their tackling's been good today, Diggers Rest. Yes, Sean Smith, Sim, so the coach would be, captain coach would be delighted. Here we go, 20 minutes here in this final term. Term quick around the grounds and Gisborne 10 6 66 trailing Sandhurst 11 15 81 at the 14 minute mark final term by 15 points. So that one's almost done and dusted considering the conditions as well. Ball comes out towards the commentary, uh, the commentary wing and I like to see Nathan Pinder pick up the ball and run. He delivers a great kick up towards half forward. Uh, Rupo will have the numbers here and they'll settle now through big boy Lee Brennan kick up towards half forward to his opposite captain there and Johnny Ryan who sends the ball crashing towards the boundary line and of course one of the things uh, for Rupert's would be that Lee Brennan you see he did a great uh, centre half forward forward has had to go back to the full back position down to the back line Sanders just kicked another goal to, uh, to lead by 21 points to always put that game to bed up at the QEO as Clark Smashes it of the uh, the Lenny variety, gets it out to Ryan, kick around the body up towards the middle of the ground, and free. Great kick in the corridor, here. in the corridor, and the way they'll go. And there it is, just grass, just yes. kick to grass, kick to grass. They've done it again. Cole Laurie's, Cole got, Laurie's got a break on his opponent through. from outside 50. Grass, grass, scrubber. Grass. <laughs> scrubber goes <laughs> forward. <forwards. laughs> Lee Brennan cleans that up and kicks back to the towards the centre of the ground. Stewie Clark drops a mark he should have taken. But well done by Pinder. Works hard, gets the ball out wide to Fogarty. Fogarty goes inside, forward 50 towards Wilson oh. again who flies. Oh, well and Kilty right. stayed down while his opponent flew. He centres the ball up towards Paddy Jackson in, oh, in the square. There. Good spoil there from Rupert's Wood, but Jeff Heritage is sitting front and centre. Squares the ball up. Oh, Beautiful oh, kick by Heritage. Well and he finds Freeth He's just been. outside 50. Mark Freeth. Ticked on 22 minutes. Of course, his brother Steve riding it up in the twos uh, last week on Highlands FM footy. They went down by two points in that one. And their opponents, Sunbury Kangaroos, defeated Rupo today by 13 goals in the Magoos. As Freeth pulls the trigger, it comes back late and goes through for a minus score. 33 points in the margin. Still not a game high despite Digger's rest dominance. Kick comes out to half forward and Stewie Clark takes another strong mark. He's from had the a kick useful out. game, Gavin. He's been exceptional again today, Stewie Clark. And there's the siren. And Diggers Rest. 6 17 53 have defeated Rupert's with 3 2 20 and will go through to the first semi final next week against the Riddle Bombers at Lansfield Park. And just a, just an outstanding performance there today by Diggers Rest. Doug. Yes, all round performance. A good backup. Numbers around the ball, Gavin. Uh, uh, their uh, willingness to uh, back one another up, support one another up, kicking the ball to position, kicking it to space, and letting their teammates run onto it. Uh, their approach to forward. Uh, to uh, their forward strategy was much better than Rupert's would. Rupert's would was struggling to be accountable and uh, get the numbers around the ball and the uh, clearances were often going uh, Diggers rest way. And uh, the strength up on the forward line there with uh, Cole, Cole, Cole Wilson uh, 
quite self-evident, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. He ended up with 4-4 for the day. Plenty of opportunities. But, look, the diggers rest midfield and half-back line used the ball far better. Uh, when, you, when you've got football going into space like the Diggers Rest side was able to do, it, it allows those blokes to run onto it, create those opportunities up forward. Wilson kicked four, Breen kicked one. Um, they, you know, they had um, Brandon Kilty kicked one as well, but they, they just looked more dangerous all day. I mean